Hello everyone, my name is Kate and welcome to this channel. Today we are going to visit the wonderful city of Oulu, the very famous national park Isosuati and last but not least Koiteli Rapids. Very very beautiful natural area with rapids and gorgeous forest around it. And we're going to start with Oulu. Oulu is one of the largest northerly cities in the world and the largest city in northern Finland. It was founded in 1605 by King Charles IX of Sweden. It was established right opposite of the fort that was built on the island of Linansari. This took place after favorable peace settlement with Russia, which removed the threat of attack via main east-west waterway, the river of Oulu. The city is located on the Bay of Bosnia and on the river of Oluyoki. The name itself actually came from the name of the river. There are, however, other theories of the origin of the name Oulu. One of the possible sources is the word in the Sami language, that's a regional language in Finland, meaning flood water. This is Oulu Market Hall, as every major city in Finland has its own market hall, a lovely place to visit, usually great food there available you can buy to take away you can eat right there um, lots of good fish uh, lots of good baked goods are uh, certainly worth a visit the modern city of Oulu has developed from being an ancient trading center today Oulu has a reputation for high-tech competencies in fact it is known as the leading labs of Europe where residents experiment with new technology on a community-wide scale uh, new technologies such as NFC tags and UBI screens University of Oulu is internationally well known for the field of information technology So today Oulu is a fifth largest city in Finland with a population of roughly 200,000 with many artists, writers, musicians living here. Every year Oulu hosts a large number of festivals and concerts and other cultural and musical events. In terms of music, the genre ranges from rock to jazz to classical music to folk, even Irish music. So no matter what you're into, you will find something to suit your taste here. So no wonder Oulu was chosen to be European Capital of Culture for 2026. The first major site of the city, the Oulu Cathedral, was built between the years of 1832 and 1844 in a lovely, sunny, traditional Finnish yellow color. And now to some sad aspects of the Oulu history. Unfortunately, in 1822, a major fire destroyed much of the city. The architect Karl Ludwig Engel, chiefly known for his neoclassical empire-style buildings around Helsinki Senate Square, was enlisted to provide the plan for rebuilding the city. With minor changes, this plan remains the basis of the layout of Oulu's town center to this day. And in terms of other must-do things in Oulu, well, first and foremost, you absolutely have to and absolutely have to take a photo with Tori Polisi, so this wonderful statue of a policeman who protects the market hall. You should definitely check out the red wooden buildings on the waterfront square, check out their coffee shops, boutique stores, buy some souvenirs, and definitely have a cup of coffee on the square. It has a lovely view over the city, and without having coffee in Finland, you haven't been to Finland. Did you know that Finland is the capital of the world for coffee consumption? You didn't? Now you do. Roughly on average, Finns <laughs> consume 10 kilograms of coffee per year per person. And definitely take a relaxing stroll in one of the many gorgeous parks that city offers. In terms of best known cultural experts of the city of Oulu, first of all, Air Guitar World Championship, yes, there is such a thing, held annually in August in Oulu. May Skuaro Hutayat probably messed it up, but I'm trying, so forgive me if I messed it up. So that's this choir of screaming men yes now defunct metal band sentenced did you know that finland is big on like huge on metal music you didn't now you do 
and one of the best ice hockey teams in Europe, Oulun Karpat. It probably doesn't come as a surprise that Finland is key cast in winter Olympic sports. Well, no surprise there, there's a lot of winter in Finland. We're going to leave the lovely city of Oulu to see a wonderful ski resort and national park, Isuosuoti. So it's a proud owner of World Ski Awards. It's a winner of World Ski Awards, its best ski resort in Finland in both 2018 and 2019. However, we're visiting it in summer, so I'm not gonna quite show you much of the winter beauty. So maybe this year. I'll make another video of winter in Isuosuoti if I'll make it there. So this is one of the many hotels here in Isosuoti. Uh, it has a wonderful terrace overlooking the national park and it, luckily for me provided blankets. So I was very, very comfortable in a fairly cold September day. We also had a lovely dinner there, uh, great food as always in Finland, never fails to amaze me. Wonderful desserts, by the way, I would highly, highly recommend trying all sorts of desserts in Finland, especially with cloud berries. Finland is big on cloud berries. There are a lot of them here and they're absolutely fantastic. There's also a skywalk and you can walk not very long distance, but you can have a better view over the national park. We're actually planning to go for breakfast, but given how beautiful it is, the breakfast would have to be postponed for a moment. So now we're going to fly over some of the gorgeous landscape here in Isosuote. One of the reasons I love hiking in autumn, be it in Switzerland or in Finland, specifically because of this magnificent natural event of earth cooling down and creating a lot of this kind of either very thick fog or even clouds on very very low altitudes making the place simply magnificent Eventually, after a while, hours and hours of shooting, we finally made it back to a hotel to have a hearty traditional Finnish breakfast. What would that be? Well, that would be porridge with berries and rye bread. There is no day without a rye bread and obviously a cup of coffee. And now we're going to our first hiking route. The first hiking route we did was very, very long. I think it was over 20 kilometers. That was called Suotin Kieros. That's Suotin Loop. So we did a huge loop around the area, which was totally worth the trouble. It has very, very uh, large variety of different landscapes from swamps to hills to uh, small canyons to whatnot. So truly, truly worth the trouble. Very, very beautiful. It's also a biking route. So if you want to do biking, we may maybe even better because you can cover this area much faster. We walked through this area and that took us the whole day, roughly 12 hours it took us with breaks, obviously and enjoying the nature, all of that, but it was, it did take a while. The winter in Isosuot is gorgeous. It's the area that has pretty much most snowfall, roughly most snowfall in Finland. There are 17 perfectly groomed slopes for every skier, be you an amateur or a pro, you will find a suitable slope here. 
We're, however, visiting Isusuoti in autumn, the golden season known as in Finland as Ruska. Ruska. So summer is also an amazing time to visit, without a doubt, you can enjoy endless days, because as we know, sun doesn't set for a few months pretty much in Finland, radiant green wilderness, berries, mushrooms, fish, nature, delicacies in local restaurants, and not to mention pure, unparalleled pleasure of countless mosquitoes and a horsefly bites. You know, horsefly doesn't actually bite you, it takes the piece out of you. Yeah, gross, I know, but anyway. So, <laughs> so that's a joke, obviously. So to avoid these particular pleasures, we prefer to hike in spring and autumn. We wander by foot, but here you can actually also do it uh, on bikes and on a canoe. Isosuati is famous for its versatile biking routes and mountain biking possibilities. Now we're actually approaching my favorite spot on this hike. That's also a reason why I highly recommend it. If you do not want to walk, I believe you can actually drive to the nearby area. So you don't have to do the full loop. However, if you have the physical strength for it, go for it. It's totally worth it. This is my favorite spot because you have lakes on both sides and you're quite high up. So you can see the lakes, the forest and the gorgeous Finnish sky. So, yep, what can be better than that? Uh, if you take a map in the tourist center or travel, whatever center, you can actually find those spots with those huts that are specifically designed for hikers. They're free of charge, you can actually go there, there's wood prepared, prepared for you and the barbecue area, so you can actually uh, barbecue your way or have tea as we did after a tiring hike of roughly at this point was 18 kilometers or so. It was wonderful to get some vegan sausages, because <laughs> I'm vegan, and some tea. It was truly a lovely break from the hike. And the best part about it is that it is free. And I love Finland uh, for the small things. Like, it's truly for the people. <laughs> it's not the people for Finland, but Finland is for the people. And that's what you could feel no matter where you go in Finland. And after a good night's sleep and hearty breakfast again, we did another shorter hike that was Vatukuro Nature Path. We were not as lucky with the weather, it was raining a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, it was gorgeous, we were standing those massive frogs and a small canyon and significant part of the beauty was the colors during the Ruska, the Ruska period, right, the golden season. So certainly would highly recommend visiting Finland in autumn. You would avoid all of the uh, nasty creatures that want to bite you, beat mosquitoes or horse flies, and it's not as hot because Finland can get quite hot in the summer, even in the north. Uh, not so much in the north, but in central Finland you could get pretty, uh, pretty significant heat waves and you don't have all of the nasty creatures and gorgeous colors are all around you. Plus you can collect mushrooms if you're interested. These are gypsy mushrooms, I think, and I actually collected quite a bunch of them, but then I even cooked them, <laughs> but then I actually threw them away because I read that there is a cousin to this mushroom that is fairly similar and instead of being digested by your body, this mushroom will digest your organs. And I kid you not, there are toxins in the mushroom that will go back and forth between kidneys and liver. I'm not going to give you details, but it's a pretty fatal mushroom. So be very, very careful if you decide to collect any mushrooms in Finland or anywhere else for that matter.
Oh, after finishing this hike, we actually hit the road and starting heading back home. And what did we see on the road? This was the height of the experience for me. We saw the northern reindeer. That was my first encounter in the wild. I was uh, screaming, but it sort of, it happened too fast, but it was lovely, lovely experience. So that's another thing about going to the northern Finland. You can actually have the encounter with the, with the reindeer. And now we're making our way to the final uh, destination, Koiteli Rapids. It's a unique natural rapid area in Kiminki, very close to Oulu, roughly 25 kilometers away from Oulu city center and driving towards Kuusamo. Koiteli is a very, very popular tourist destination with strong cultural and historical values, really good coffee shops, again, had coffee there as always. There are absolutely stunning rock formations there. So those are quartzite, and the conglomerate of rock formations in Koiteli is of Paleoproterozoic rock <laughs> of 2,093 million years ago. So if I'm not mistaken, we're talking more than 2 billion years ago. The rock foundation has moved with, um, which is why um, there are cracks in some of the areas, uh, but they're absolutely stunning. So even though the rocks are really hard still during the glacier movement between 30,000 years ago and 10,000 years ago roughly many kilometers thick ice residual mass moved through the rocks breaking them down and making them into this pieces so certainly worth a walk all of the rapids are connected they're small islands here and there they're all connected with small bridges so the walk is absolutely stunning and totally worth a visit especially if you're doing the similar trip as we did Oulu Isosuoti and on the way back definitely makes a sense makes sense to see Koiteli either on the way there or on the way back because it is quite close to Oulu All right, guys, so that would be all that I wanted to share with you for this trip. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me. Put the thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the future content. Check my other videos and see you soon.